All right, I'm starting this video right where I left off on the previous video. So we had just wrapped up showing some various matrix functions and some indexing and how to get both maximums and indexes out of the max function. And scrolling down, the very next section here is labeled tables. Now this video is going to be all about just an introduction into using tables in MATLAB. We're still using the same document as in the previous part 15 matrix funks underscore tables underscore sort. And the next video after this, we'll also be using this document link as always in the description. So in my courses, my students will be asked regularly to organize their data into tables. Tables are a special type of data structure that let you add column labels and various other things, but mostly just column labels and the output looks kind of nice. And it's also really easy, eventually we'll see, to write out into, for example, Excel spreadsheets or other spreadsheet formats that you might want to write your data out into. All right, so we're going to start with a very, very simple example. Let me run this section first, control enter, and I'm going to scroll up to the top. First thing I do is I create a variable named tablespoons and I put into it a vector of numbers. I just made up, you know, these numbers, put them in order. And then I transpose this vector. Now, I've mentioned in passing that you can transpose a vector just by putting a little apostrophe after it. Now here I'm using this big old transpose function. Why would I want to write that out when this right here with just a little apostrophe is going to accomplish the same task? Well, the reason that I always use for why it might be a really good idea to actually write out transpose parentheses and then the thing that you're transposing is because when your programs get more complicated and maybe you have a problem where your rows and columns are not lining up because maybe you transposed something where you shouldn't have or you forgot to transpose something that you should have, it's a lot easier to read through your code and pick out this word and see, oh, I actually transposed this or oh, I didn't transpose it. Whereas if you've just got a tiny little apostrophe at the end, your eyes will glaze over that. And you might think like, no, 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 I'll read carefully. I'll notice the apostrophe. Good luck. I think most people won't much of the time. It's very important that we set tablespoons equal to the transpose of tablespoons. A lot of times people will see this and they'll be like, oh, that's redundant. It is not. It is very different if we just run transpose tablespoons without setting anything equal to it. In fact, let me rerun this code. And, you know, pay attention just once to the output. This is how it looks. If I scroll down, there's my nice table. Let me rerun this without the tablespoons equals. I still have the transpose. Control enter. Whoa, it looks totally different and my table looks like garbage. I can't really see any of its values and like everything's weird and messed up. So what happened? Well, if you do not set a variable equal to something, that variable will not be changed. This is actually a good thing. We're not gonna change something by accident. We have to do it intentionally. But more often, people think that they changed something, but they didn't. So without a variable name and an equal sign, the information inside of that variable will not be altered. All right, let me run this section again now that I've fixed it and digressed into transpose here and scroll back to the top. Okay, so there's my tablespoons vector. It is actually a column vector because I modified it with the transpose here. So it's not horizontal and just being temporarily displayed that way. It is truly a column vector. Scrolling on down. Now the conversions, I, I hope this is right. I think it's right. I looked it up at some point. The conversions from tablespoons to teaspoons is a multiplication by three. So to create my new vector named teaspoons, I take all my tablespoon values and multiply by three. Now, thankfully, when I multiply just the number three by a whole big long vector of values, MATLAB knows or MATLAB assumes that I want to multiply the three times each and every one of the values which is what it does, and I get this new vector here. And my new vector is going to be the same size and shape as my old vector, so it's also going to be a column vector. And that's true of matrices as well. One thing you might notice here is that I'm using dot star for the multiplication, not just star. Now this actually in this particular situation does not make a difference, and it would be the same if I just used the star for multiplication. However, I'm going to recommend that you get in the habit of using dot star. And we'll see some examples later on where it's really important because in certain situations, star by itself is actually a different operation compared to dot star. And if you're just doing basic arithmetic as opposed to matrix multiplication, I'm referring to the linear algebra 
operation of matrix multiplication. If you're not doing that matrix multiplication, you want to use dot star. I also recommend if you're doing division, use dot slash. If you're doing exponent, use dot caret. There's no such thing as dot plus or dot minus. You don't have to do it for addition and subtraction. You just have to do it for multiplication, division, and exponents. I will get to a point in this course where I fully explain what star by itself does when you're multiplying matrices, but we're not there yet. Please get into the habit of this. I apologize for not emphasizing the use of dot in multiplication, division, and expo exponents in earlier videos, but I will do so uh, moving forward. All right, so I'm really slowing down this example. I've got two vectors, I've got tablespoons, I've got teaspoons. Finally, we use the built-in MATLAB table function and we create this nice output table right here. How do I do it? Well, I need to capture the result into a variable. I named my variable data. This is probably the most common uh, naming mistake that I ever see, is seeing people name their variable table. That's a problem that's not going to work. This right here is a function. I do wish that it was a verb or a verb phrase to indicate it's an action. You know, make table would be a nice one, I think. Something like that. Unfortunately, it's just named table. Don't make the mistake of naming your variable the same thing, otherwise you'll have to clear off your workspace and try again. I named my table data because I wasn't feeling very original, but it's fine, it works. What are the inputs? What goes inside the parentheses of the table function? Well, however many column vectors of data you have. So in this case, I have two columns. So teaspoons goes first if I want those teaspoon values to be first column, comma, tablespoons for the second column. And then on this next line, I use this kind of weird line of code and it scrolls off the page. So let me make this wider so you can see it. Data, that's just my variable, dot capital P properties, dot capital V variable, capital N names, but no dot there, equals curly brackets. I think this is the first time we've seen the curly brackets. Apostrophes around the column label of for teaspoons, comma, apostrophes around the column label for tablespoons. And that's how I got my column labels. I don't recommend that anybody memorize this sort of thing. Absolutely a good uh, candidate for any sort of reference sheet you want to create. Some people call them cheat sheets, but I don't like that term because it sounds like you're doing something bad when actually it's really good. You should create a reference sheet with minimal MATLAB examples. And this sort of line of code, I highly recommend for it because who wants to memorize this nonsense? The capitalizations are important. If I get rid of the, like, if I use lowercase n, it absolutely does not work. So like, yeah, that's kind of obnoxious. So, you know, we just have a reference that we can refer to if we forget. I think I neglected to say earlier, table does not work in octave. I will either figure out an alternative or give up, and I will definitely append to the end of this video information about how to either do table in octave and what you'll need to do to set it up, um, but the basic code here that I'm showing with table does not work in octave. Continuing on down. This is what I mentioned before. Don't name your variable table. And you might think you can get away with it, right? You might think this just works fine. Control enter. Oh, look, I, you know, I changed the column names. Now they're this and uh, it worked fine. What's the problem? The next section literally has the exact same code as the previous section. I could have just rerun this section. I don't even need a copy of it. What happens if I try and run it again? It doesn't work because now table doesn't refer to a MATLAB function that creates a table. Now table refers to a table type variable, which we can see in my workspace right here. You can't ask a table type variable to take as input two column vectors. MATLAB doesn't understand what you would mean by that. Now the fix is of course to just use clear and delete everything away. And now we'll need to reset our teaspoon and tablespoon vectors, but if I rerun it, now it now it works, and now we're okay. One more little bit in this section. Uh, I say it's optional, that's just for my class, but you might want to know, how do I label not just the columns, but also the rows? Now, I use this uh, web page reference right here, which, you know, you can find this. I'll try and remember to put that in the video description. But uh, yeah, I just basically Googled it, and then I have this example right here from that web page of how to label the rows. First, let me show you what it looks like. So I'll run this section, control enter, and I'm gonna make my command window a lot wider. All right, and so here I've got column labels, you know, just arbitrary stuff, and then row labels as well. And we could change these, we could change all this stuff. And this is just randomized numbers. 
for my uh, data that I'm inserting into my table. And let's see how I created this. I uh, created a random matrix, a random four by four matrix of, of numbers. And I named that X. And then for my column labels, the variable name was label and equals curly brackets. And then whatever you want the labels to be inside of single quotes, followed by semicolons in between them, not commas, importantly. Same thing for the row labels, equals curly bracket and then the row names separated by semicolons. And then you use this MATLAB function, array to table. Again, this does not work in octave. And into this array to table function, we put our matrix of values. We use this label here, row names, to say to MATLAB, to say to this function, hey, the next thing I'm gonna give you is the row labels followed by row labels. And then we say variable names to say, okay, the next thing I'm gonna give you is the variable names that's actually the same as the column names, and then that variable right there. You'll often see in a variety of MATLAB functions where you use this sort of convention of a label saying, okay, here's the information I'm about to put after the next comma, followed by the information. We'll see that a lot more when we get to the plotting and graphing section. And I do have a variable that's capturing that result. Again, carefully not named table just T, capital T for why not. And then I display out the T right there. And again, this I literally just cribbed this example from MathWorks here. So you can, you can refer to that for more information. And that's all for our introduction to tables in MATLAB. We'll say more about tables in future videos. Now let's see if I can get that figured out in Octave. I didn't find any results that I was happy with. I found this page someone asking basically the same question. Is there something equivalent to MATLAB's table function in Octave? They received a few responses. One is this data frame package. The other is this tableicious package for downloading and installing. I will provide all these web page links in the video description. Neither of those quite met my needs for the simplicity that I wanted, that I was hoping for. It certainly looks like they both work fine and do something. Uh, the data frame package uh, lets you import information in from a spreadsheet, so I might double back to that in a later video. The tableicious one, I did not find the documentation very helpful. I clicked around on a few web pages and basically couldn't find what I was looking for. These videos are for absolute beginners in MATLAB, and I'm not going to go into a lot of details unless I can find something that's that meets my needs relatively simply. So for now, table function does not work for Octave users, and that is a pity, but we're going to move on.